I've been doing a lot of thinking about these Eagles, and the more I think, the more stressed out I become. Yeah, for a couple reasons. Eagles fans, there's a lot at play here. If Jalen Hurts does not play this week nor next week, then keep in mind, Jalen Hurts might not play football from December 18th to January 22nd until that divisional round game. You're talking about four or five weeks off. If Jalen Hurts does, in fact, play next week, then remember this. The Eagles, for the last six weeks, have had nothing to play for. They've been in cruise control, steady ahead of the division. And now, week 18, the Giants are going to have a lot to play for. The Eagles are going to have a lot to play for. And the Eagles will not have their right tackle, Lane Johnson. So the Eagles go from being a team that's been able to play free from fear to now being a team having to play with everything on the line, the one seed or the five seed, depending on if they win that last week 18 game versus the New York Giants. Stressing me out. If Jalen Hurts does play next week, and he only plays for half to get him right. What happens if he gets hurt? His injury's on his throwing shoulder. Lane Johnson protects his throwing shoulder side. Lane yep. Johnson may be the best tackle in all of football. Regardless, Shady, of any outcome I think about, they all lead me to nervousness, because if he doesn't play, I'm worried about his rust. If he does play, I'm worried about him getting hurt. There's no way I can think about the Eagles situation right now and not be free from nervousness. That's why I'm here. So help please, that's why I'm here. Yeah, help I got, me I got, out. Look, Are you nervous? Look, don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. <clears throat> First of all, to answer some of your questions, that's a good thing. I, I think if we if we don't play play Jalen, a guy like like uh, Howie Roseman did a good job of putting his team together. I think when you build a good team, it's the depth. It's not always the stars. It's the depths of the team. So I think Gardner is a solid backup. He played well against Dallas. Minus the turnovers, he still played well to win that game. It's okay. So let's say Jalen doesn't Jalen doesn't play. Right? You get more rest. What's that saying in camp? Camp is hot out there. Guys are tired. So many reps, similar to now, late in the season. Guys, they, they, they haven't played all camp. They said it, they said it hurt. Then they come back at camp. What do they say about them? Fresh legs. Fresh legs. Fresh legs. There's nothing wrong with fresh legs. Jalen Hurts, when he comes back for the playoffs, he will be the freshest, healthiest quarterback in the whole playoffs. Think about that. Yep. Right? So now, if, if he sits, okay, if, now let's think about if he plays. With that scenario, I think if he plays for a half against the, the Giant, against the Giants, knock some little rust off a little bit, and then we sit him out. I think we can win without Jalen, though. Just enough. We need him for the, the big games. Listen. Take me into the mind of an elite NFL player because nobody at home has ever probably reached the heights that you have reached. How would you feel not playing for four or five weeks? Say you're Jalen Hurts. Would you rather not play for four or five weeks and your first playoff game be against the Bucks and Tom Brady or the Cowboys and Dak Prescott? Or... Would you rather play Week 18 knowing you're not fully healthy, but you can give it a go, but you might get hurt again? Educate me. To pick one of them, I mean, to be honest, I I'm cool with both of them, right? Okay. I think that the rest, I will probably take the rest. Um, now I'm a running back. I get banged up. But then again, Jalen gets banged up. Yeah. His shoulders, his throwing shoulder is really banged up. And the one thing about this football league is that everybody's banged up. So now if we're a team like the Bucks, we're continuously battling, battling. We're, we're fighting to keep a playoff berth, right? So you're going extra hard. Each, each week go, going into the playoffs, it gets harder and harder, more intense, more intense. So now, think about it. The Bucks is a little banged up. They're tired. I'm fresh. <laughs> I would pick that. I'll be fresh, man. Come in there, no injuries, ready to roll. Dave, break this down for me because you've seen Dak Prescott take leaves of absence for health reasons himself. Obviously, he had this year the thumb, yep. missed five weeks. Last year, he had a calf, missed a week, but then had a bye week, so missed two weeks. Talk to me about the nervousness Eagles fans might have knowing their quarterback might be missing a couple weeks and then playing the most big game of his life. I mean, I think if I'm an Eagles fan, I it goes back to what we were just saying. I take solace in the consistency of this team. I mean, like, what's the closest to a dip the Eagles have had? They lost the game where everything in the world that could go wrong did. And then, the, like, then they lost, like, they beat a Colts team not that convincingly. Like, that was the closest to a low that they've had. Nobody's sweating that game against Dallas and Philly. I don't think that's the case. And I, so I have absolute faith that with Gardner Minshew, the Eagles can go beat the Saints. They take all of the pressure off of themselves. And then I think they'll handle the season finale the way that they should, which is to say Jalen Hurts will have had two and a half weeks off by the time it gets to practice week next week when they're getting ready for the Giants. He'll, I, I think he'll be fine. I think you give him a one-half game plan. He's a mobile guy. He can avoid contact. You say, hey, we're going to give you four series. Get in, get out, get your feet back underneath you, and be ready for the playoffs. Like, I'm not really sweating this at all. And the Eagles, Shady mentioned their depth. Their depth is part of it. 
The defense speaks for itself, even though Dak Prescott kind of shredded them last week. But the depth overall is fantastic. They got a wonderful offensive line, even without Lane Johnson. Joy's so disappointed. It's fine. <laughs> they got a great receiver core that can make their backup quarterback look good. Like, I think they'll be fine. That's why I think they'll win this weekend, and that will give them the freedom to work Jalen Hurts back in in the season finale so that he's not going into the playoffs with a month off. Joy, where do you stand? I don't like operating from a place of fear. Really very good doctors paying attention to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is also a grown man, and he's a young grown man. <laughs> like, you, you bounce back when you're younger. So I don't, I, I don't like operating from a space of if he wants to get out there and get a couple reps in a game that doesn't matter at the end of the season, oh, we got to be careful, he could get hurt. Like, like, he could get hurt. He could get hurt in a million different ways. Yeah. You, you just can't, you can't operate from a space of fear. If he feels like he needs more rest, then you're going to have to risk the rust. But you just can't have it like every which way. He doesn't need to be in a bubble. If he's, if he's healthy enough to be out there and he wants to get some reps in in the final game, if it's not a game that matters because they win this weekend, then put him out there. But I, I, don't, I don't know that like being rested is the, is the worst thing in the world either. He's a young guy, and he was playing at a very high level before he got injured as well. This is a solid, deep team. Where, where's the rust going to be? He's like going to miss the connection with his receivers. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know that you, you're going to be able to make an argument that it's the wrong choice no matter what Either you way. do. Either way. So sure. I don't like operating from a space of fear. Here's my, here is the fear, or I'll, let me say discernment then that I'll operate from. The last time we saw Jalen Hurts was his worst game of the season. Last time we saw Jalen Hurts was against the Chicago Bears, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Two yeah. interceptions, had to put the team on his back. I think he had to run the ball 17 times, clawed back into a victory against a Bears team that Shady bets against every time. And has beat me because of it. So if we haven't seen Jalen Hurts two and a half weeks going into next week, and the last time we saw him, he wasn't at his best, that's where I'm concerned. It's like the last time we saw you, you weren't at your best, and we ain't seen you in a while. Aren't you, if it was your quarterback, wouldn't you be a little nervous if it was Nick Foles, if it was Mike Vick, if it was Sanchez, if it was any of them dudes? Like, uh-oh, well, like, you, 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 you ready? If them dudes are playing at the elite level that he's playing at, and which they all have at one uh, time Point in their, their life, career, yep. I wouldn't be nervous. You're you're allowed to have a bad game. Not like, in the playoffs, though. But I, I'm just saying. You, you said the last time we seen you. Got it. Got okay, it, got so it. you had you had what? 14 weeks of of playing very 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 well. That's why you're an MVP candidate for a reason. So yes, you can have one bad game, and I trust you that much that I know you'll pick it up and you'll be back to playing at a high level. Mm. That's Jalen Hurts we talk about. We're not talking about no quarterbacks that play in, in Dallas. Or, or playing Texas. We're playing about, we're talking about Jalen Hurts here. MVP candidate. Come on, don't, don't, don't play with my boy. He get that shoulder right, he take his time off, and we're going to see everything we've seen this whole year in the playoffs. He's Ain't right. that right, Dave? We're not talking about Davis right. Mills. We are not right. at all Come on, man, you're playing with the wrong guy. <laughs> Davis Mills. Coming up, speaking of quarterbacks, this is some very, very interesting news. Russell Wilson, star quarterback from the Broncos, is getting some rather intriguing defense from his teammates and even former teammates. A very odd time, given the fact that the Broncos coach just got fired. What does this mean? for maybe a future Hall of Fame quarterback. That's next, speak. And says, preach, I can't too talk too much because we play this week, but Russell Wilson, you already know you are him. Him being you that dude, gang. The slander of Russell Wilson is beyond crazy. Clearly I had to fill in some of the blanks for you all, but fascinating that Melvin Gordon, former teammate of Russell Wilson, now opponent of Russell Wilson, coming to the defense of Russell Wilson. Joy, this is in the same week that Jerry Judy, first-round pick wide receiver, came to the defense of Russ. K.J. Hamler, second-round pick wide receiver, came to the defense of Russ. And offensive lineman came to the defense of Russ. Now former running back who got cut from the team came to the defense. You had one of the most intriguing takes I've heard of this whole situation off camera. What is your take on the defense of Russ from his teammates? Well, I think it's a good thing that his teammates are defending him because it, it is <clears throat> helping to crush the narrative that, you know, Russ was not connecting with his teammates or that that was the issue here. But we all watched Russ this season. So if it's not that he wasn't all the way dialed in, if it's not that he wasn't connecting with his teammates, if it's not that he isn't the hardest worker that these guys have ever played with, which they're all saying, then it was all Nathaniel Hackett? Or... or Russ is washed because if what you're trying to tell me what they're trying to tell us is that this is wrong Russ is completely dialed in 
the office was being used. The parking spaces were for a purpose. He was there. He connected with the teammates. There wasn't any kind of uh, animosity in the locker room. So what's the problem then? Because we all watched him play terribly this year. 